All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. Okay, we got to talk about natural gas. We are going to go over the natural gas chart and, you know, really show you guys what I'm looking at on the futures. All right, we're basically having a breakout and retesting this key uh, really channel right here that we had. This was very controlled selling. Uh, we'll talk about being able to spot these structures and these types of controlled selling that, you know, this isn't really bearish, right? You see the, the uptrend and you see this very controlled selling here, right? Very algorithmic. And we got a nice breakout. Here's we're going for a breakout retest. We'll break that down more, but there's lots of news to talk about in the natural gas sphere. So we're going to go ahead and do that, right? We can see U.S. natural gas is up 6%, apparently on a bet over the Russia fertilizer demand. Um, now, there's been a lot of stuff going on with Russia and Ukraine, you know, obviously over the past year, but even more recently in recent news, we'll kind of break that down a little bit. Um, we can see that the price is weighed down by ample U.S. supplies. We're going to break that down. Chenier Energy's Sabine Pass LNG plant returns to normal. Now, that's pretty big news in the LNG atmosphere. Um, you know, so good to see that. We like to see that. And wary of the 2022 crisis, Asian buyers are going to build strategic gas reserves. Now, this is going to help out with the whole LNG and liquefied natural gas and the exporting of LNG in the U.S. All right. Now, if you don't know, uh, really, last year was a big year for the U.S. and LNG and just, you know, natural gas in general, obviously, right? But the U.S. really became a global powerhouse in exporting LNG, and that's something to, you definitely want to continue monitoring. Now, I do have a video going over the, some of the top LNG stocks. You can just look up exactly Trade's top LNG stocks. If you don't want to trade natural gas, the commodity itself, there are companies, right, with revenues, earnings, different things like that, that you can invest in to also play natural gas as well. Of course, do your own research and, you know, dive further into any of those companies if that's something you might want to invest in. Um, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the full disclosure. Now, let's start talking about this right here. U.S. natural gas up 6%, apparently on bet over Russia fertilizer demand. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that were driving the prices up last week. But with all else, including the weather being equal, the fallout from the collapse of the Black Sea Grain Initiative after Russia's pullout from the deal was cited as a possible catalyst for the rally in U.S. gas. Since withdrawing from the UN broker deal that allowed Ukrainian grain exports to flow to other countries, Russian leader Vladimir Putin had laid out his demands for the deal to be reinstated. At the top of the list was lifting of international sanctions on Russian fertilizer deliveries. If the demands are met, Russian gas supply will be drawn from as the country's fertilizer. Now, if Putin gets his way, a huge chunk of the fertilizer industry resumes manufacturing in full force and will be tapping Russian gas stockpiles too. A bullish development, said Gelber's analyst, who noted the rally on the Henry hub coincided with the breaking of this news on Russian demands over the Black Sea front. Now, this is really interesting too, right here. Okay. Um, last winter, all right. And really almost the first, you know, five, six months of the year, we kept seeing this uh, warm winter narrative, warm winter narrative. And that was a lot of the narrative that was driving natural gas prices down. But if you have any type of common sense, you know when winter is over and when you're in April and you're in May and we're still seeing reports of a warm winter narrative being bearish, you can use a little bit of common sense and realize that, hey, well, maybe this is actually going to turn into a hot summer narrative, right? And if you take a look at the lower 48 states electricity generation by source, What's very interesting when you look at the year over year comparison, look at natural gas, the only one that actually rose. Coal down 26%, nuclear down 1%, renewable energy down 4%. Meanwhile, natural gas was up 10%. And natural gas fired electricity generation peaks in the summer when electricity demand for air conditioning is highest due to seasonally high average temperatures. Another lower peak occurs during the winter when the use of heat pumps, electrical radiators, space heaters, and other electrical heating equipment to heat buildings increases in some parts of the United States. So this is a little bit of seasonality that you want to keep in mind uh, if you're ever trying to trade natural gas. Uh, these are some of the things that you want to be aware of. You know, the summer season, the winter season, um, you know, generally have a big effect on the price of natural gas. Now, when you look at the weekly total rig count, all right, according to Baker Hughes for the week ending Tuesday, July 11th, the natural rig, ga uh, natural gas rig count decreased by two rigs from a week ago to 133. Um, the number of oil directed rigs decreased by three rigs from a week ago to 537. 
The total rig count, which includes five miscellaneous rigs, stands at 675, 81 fewer rigs than last year at this time. Uh, fewer rigs is going to be a little bit bullish for natural gas. And this was a little bit of the narrative driving some of the gains that we saw, um, you know, towards the end of the week and, you know, just in natural gas last week. Now, the prices did drop a little bit, all right, and it, the prices were weighed down by ample U.S. supplies. Nat, nat gas prices Friday gave up early gains and posted moderate losses on ample U.S. gas supplies, with U.S. nat gas inventories more than uh, up more than 13% above their five-year seasonal average. Nat gas prices retreated Friday despite record high temperatures in the western and southwestern U.S. that are boosting nat gas demand from electricity providers to power air conditioning. Now, the prices continue to be undercut by high inventories caused by weak heating demand during the abnormally mild winter. This past winter's warm temperatures caused nat gas inventories to rise in Europe and the United States. Gas storage across Europe was 82% full as of July 17th, well above the five-year seasonal average of 67% full for this time of year. U.S. nat gas inventories as of July 14th were up 13.8% above their five-year seasonal average. Um, an increase in U.S. electricity output is bullish for nat gas demand from utility providers. The Edison Electric Institute reported uh, that total U.S. electricity output in the in the week uh, ended July 15th rose up 2.2 percent year over year. However, cumulative U.S. electricity output in the 52 week period in ending July 15th fell negative 1.1 percent year over year. Um, so, you know, just kind of touching on some of that news. Now, today's video is sponsored by Simply Wall Street. It's a really great platform, guys. I've used it for a while. They have an awesome app and an awesome website. And honestly, you have nothing to lose, okay? There's a link in the description. You guys will get a 14-day free trial. Look up whatever stock you want, okay? Uh, type in some of your favorite stocks that you own. Type in some of your favorite stocks that you want to own. And you'll start to slowly fall in love with the platform, all right? And the first 100 people to actually join and purchase a membership will get up to 40% off. So that puts the uh, the yearly plan at less than $200 for you, all right? And if you don't like it, again, you have nothing to lose. You can just cancel the 14-day free trial and move on and, you know, just continue about your life. Now, you can also email me anytime for a one-on-one -on -one personal coaching session, all right? I do lots of coaching sessions. Um, I do those every week, and I actually do them. There's a large portion of people um, significantly related to boil, right? So, if, you know, this is a natural gas video, and if you're trading boil um, and you feel like you need a little bit of a help, all right, feel free to reach out to me via email, and we can work on setting up a scheduled time. Now, let's go ahead and get into the chart for the natural gas futures. So here we are on our daily time frame at the moment, and uh, we're going to start off here because I want to highlight the MACD. This is your moving average convergence divergence. This is what's known as a lagging indicator, okay? Uh, we have the RSI down here, which is more of a leading indicator, and some important things are about to happen on both of these, all right? Um, specifically here on the MACD, we're very close to getting a crossover to the upside, right? If you take a look, this would be known as an entry signal, a buy signal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when this red line crosses above the yellow line on the daily time frame, you can see that that was met with a large push up in the price. Same thing over here when it crosses to the downside. When you see it cross to the downside, you see we're met with downside pressure. And, you know, being that this is a lagging indicator, it's going to tell you something after it's already happened, right? So you're going to miss the initial move, but it, then it's going to help you spot the trend, right? And so, you know, right here, if we just draw a line up, you see that we have this big candle right here, this downward pressure here, all right? And then we start to consolidate and we get the breakdown there. But that breakdown comes after we got our lagging indicator, right? So maybe this was like the real, uh, you know, when the selling pressure started. And then we see a little bit of consolidation. Our lagging indicator kicks in and we get the push downwards. Now, remember, I said that this was very controlled selling. We're going to zoom in on the four hour chart and it's a little bit clearer there. But if we can get this red line to cross above the yellow line and get a nice bullish crossover on the MACD, that will be a good sign for natural gas and meaning that we could potentially head up towards the upper region of our supply zone. Now, we haven't tested this supply zone, the top of the supply zone uh, since, you know, basically the beginning of the year in 2022, when we completely just fell through here, right? We saw no demand. We were met with no demand in this area. And we actually came down to our key macro uh, demand zone, right? I'll show you guys this macro demand zone. If I can just uh, move my big old head out the way, right? And we take a look here and we go to our monthly chart, 
right? <clears throat> These are our macro zones, right? So we have our macro demand zone here. You can see in the past, this is clearly an area of demand. Even when we wick down to it, we see price, you know, demand steps in and buyers push the price up higher. We have two overhead supply zones and we've really been struggling with the supply zone here. Um, you know, we just completely flush, uh, flush through it. You can tell by this big monthly candlestick. Uh, and then we came down to our demand zone. And if we zoom in back to our daily time frame, you can see that, you know, we were met with buyers each time we came down into that demand zone. Uh, we quickly reacted up higher. Now, we have this initial bullish divergence trend line right here, which if you're not familiar with bullish divergence, okay, notice how we have a low here and then a lower low here. And here we have a low and a higher low. So remember, this is our leading indicator, not our lagging indicator, okay? The lagging indicator is right here on the MACD. Our leading indicator is showing us that we're making lower lows on the price action, but we're making higher lows on the relative strength index, increasing in relative strength as price is dropping. This is a bullish divergence. Um, I really love combining a few strategies together, right, to really look for an optimal entry or exit. So in this case, we have bullish divergence. That's about one signal. And then we come down into our demand zone here, right? And so that's, you know, about another signal right there. So Combining a little bit of supply and demand support and resistance with a simple RSI bullish divergence is going to give you much, uh, you know, much more confidence in your plays, much more confidence in your entries and exits. And when you can get two, three, four, five signals to align together, um, you know, that's when you're really going to have that true edge in the market. So in this case, uh, you know, it was a very good opportunity to go long. Uh, we ended up creating a rising wedge, breaking through there. Uh, you can see it a little bit clearer if we drop down to the four hour chart. But before we do, I just want to highlight that, you know, we've bounced off of this trend line or near this trend line many times in the past. Uh, each time that we've pulled back, you know, near our demand zone or touched our demand zone. Uh, and most recently, OK, over here. We did test this RSI bullish divergence trend line again. And if we do happen to pull back lower, we're going to see, are we going to continue bouncing off of this bullish divergence trend line? If we break through and flip this to resistance from support, that's going to be a very bearish look for natural gas. And most likely the futures are going to come down and retest this demand zone. So you definitely want to pay attention to that and how we react to this initial bullish divergence trend line. If we go to our four hour chart and just zoom in a little bit more here. We do have our FIB levels, and you can see that the 78.6% retracement level was very strong here on the futures, all right? We had this crazy wick up, but we were not able to close above this level. And we haven't been able to flip this level to, resi uh, to support from resistance really since we initially broke through, right? You can see strong resistance up here, right? Then we gap up over that area, and what do we do? We flush right down below it, right? So not able to flip it to support and push up higher. Same thing over here. We, uh, you know, we start to close up here above it, and then we gap down below it. Over here, we get very close to trying to establish it as a support zone. Um, but what do we do? We flush right through it, and we still have been unable to flush right through it. Now, when you take a look at this, okay, look at all of the touches we have on this specific level, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we'll even call this one here: ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, 14, 15, 16, 17 times we've literally tested this level. Um, you know, the, the more times you test the level, the weaker it's going to get. Okay, so in my opinion, there is a strong chance if we are able to bounce, okay, and get the textbook breakout, retest, push higher, I think that there's a very strong chance that we're going to push through that 78.6 retracement level and try to make our way up higher into the supply zone, okay? Um, you know, over here is going to be our 100% retracement, all right? And that's gonna be um, around like 246, 248. Uh, so we'll see if we'll be able to uh, get up there on these natural gas futures. Remember, all right, things like UNG, boil, cold, they trade based off of the natural gas futures. So, you know, if the natural gas futures are going up, you're gonna see UNG and boil going up uh, and you're gonna see cold going down. Right. And the inverse would uh, apply for that. Right. If you see it going down, um, you know, natural gas futures going down, you're going to see things like UNG and boil going down. But there's, you know, some things that you really need to be cautious of when it comes to trading things like UNG and boil. All right. There's lots of decay associated with those things. And many people are just ignorant to the fact. Right. Ignorance is bliss until you really get burned by the widow maker. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't trade things like boil and UNG. Right. There's lots of myths around that basically saying that, you know, it's impossible to ever make money with those. That's not the case, but there's a lot of risk that you need to be aware of and, um, you know, know, know about. 
I have an entire video completely dedicated to that. You can just type Zachary Trades, um, you know, UNG, Boyle, Decay, Myths, all right? And just, just type in Zachary Trades, Boyle, Decay. And it's a great video that goes highly into detail over all of those factors. So that way you guys know what it is that you're getting into and you're not caught by surprise, right? I mentioned doing a lot of those coaching sessions. And I've had coaching sessions where I've talked to people down, you know, five, six, even seven figures, um, just because they weren't aware of what they were getting into and some of the risks associated with them um, and, you know, just didn't have proper risk management, right? So we want to prevent that from happening and we want you guys to have good entries and exits, uh, go into things with a plan where you're going to sell your loss at, where you're going to sell your profit at. Okay. A lot of people, that's a, that's another big rookie mistake is uh, not knowing where they're actually going to take profit, right? It's just up. All right. And let's say they're up 10, 15, 20%, and then they never sell, it pulls back and then they end up selling it for a loss. Um, you know, that's, that's a mistake you want to avoid, right? There's nothing wrong with taking profit, looking for another entry, especially if you're trading these things. Okay. And not necessarily looking to, um, you know, just buy and hold. Okay. Um, you know, if you're trading, you need to have a plan when you enter and exit your trades. All right. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, and, and I'll kind of close out with this point here is, um, if we get a look above and fail, that's not going to be a good look for natural gas. Okay. Um, just point blank period. That's 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 not going to be a, a a good look. But what I mean by that is, you see, we've gotten the breakout. If we come down here and get the retest and push higher, you know, that's what we're going to look for. Okay, this right here, right, this moment right here, where we're at right now, this is the bear. I'm sorry, the bull's full opportunity to take advantage of the price action and show that they're in control. Right here, this is it, guys. OK, if the bulls do not step in at this level and the price actually goes back within this range. So if we look above and fail and we fall back down into this range, that's going to be a bearish signal because it, what happens is, is it shows you that at this moment here where the bulls had the full opportunity, they didn't take advantage of that opportunity. Rather, bears were in control of the price action. So if this is a false breakout right here and bears are in control of the price action, we're most likely going to head back lower towards the bottom of this range. So you definitely want to pay close attention to that. All right. And you want to be aware of, you know, basically what I just described to you um, that's relevant in, you know, commodities and futures and, and crypto, Forex, stocks, all of that. Um, you know, that's that's a very good way to understand the price action and be able to tell who's really in control of the price action. Now, remember, you know, if we do get the bounce here, we're going to be testing the 78.6 retracement level again. It's been a very strong resistance level. It's very valid. Uh, but the more times you test the level, the weaker it's going to get. So the uh, probability of us breaking through is increasing the more times we've tagged it. And, you know, we've tagged it many, many times as I broke down in the video. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys did. And don't forget, you can always email me for one of those one-on-one -on -one personal coaching sessions if you guys are interested. ExactlyTrades at gmail.com.